They then go on to talk about uh, how they've been urging Gazans to flee northern Gaza and head south. That's similar to what we heard yesterday in their statement. They don't really acknowledge the civilian casualties here, but reiterate their position and their uh, call for civilians to head south. So this, this is the uh, second strike on the Jabalia refugee camp in less than 24 hours. Israel has now officially confirmed that the Israeli Defense Forces have bombed the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza for the second time. So I just want to back up for a second and remind you all that after they bombed that refugee camp, I should say refugee camp the first time, killing at least 50 civilians, they got a lot of backlash for it. But when you have the country with the most powerful military to back you up in everything and anything you want to do, you're not really going to care about that international backlash. You're not going to care about what the UN has to say about the high civilian death toll. You're going to go ahead and bomb it the second time. Israeli airstrikes also hit the vicinity of the Al-Quds Hospital in Gaza City, where doctors say up to 14,000 displaced people are sheltering, according to the director of the hospital. The strikes that began Wednesday evening continued into Thursday morning and were getting closer to the hospital, according to Dr. Bashir Murad. The civil defense in Hamas run Gaza described the strike as a second massacre. The airstrike killed at least 80 people and injured hundreds more, according to a doctor, Dr. Atef Al Kulut. Uh, the director of Gaza's Indonesian hospital. He told CNN more bodies were being dug out of the rubble and the majority of casualties were women and children. In fact, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the names of the individuals who have died as a result of these airstrikes and the bombardment by the IDF in Gaza, you'll notice that somewhere between 65 to 70% of the civilians killed are women, children and elderly people. So um, I don't know, I mean, that's a, a lot of civilian death. Uh, about 9,000 civilians have died already. The number is actually likely higher than that. And um, I don't know, I, Waz, do you think that Israelis are finally feeling safe? Are there enough deaths in the Gaza Strip to make them feel safe? Enough refugee camps bombed, enough hospitals bombed? I don't know, tell me. This it's, it's hard to talk about because this isn't, again, they're not gonna get some military victory out of this. Essentially what they're doing right now is collecting scalps. Is, you know, they, they put a certain amount of dead bodies on us. Um, we're gonna inflict this, you know, more dead bodies on them. That's what seems to be the animating logic because again, they don't have intel on Hamas or their whereabouts. If they did, the attack would have never been able to be planned and executed in the way that it was in the first place. Like the reason why Hamas was able to do this cuz they they forgot about these guys. They for, they 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 forgot about the the crisis that was happening in Gaza. And so these guys were able to do this. So this idea that these attacks are aimed at quote unquote destroying Hamas is absurd. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing targeted about this. They have no information or intel. They're just bombing stuff indiscriminately. That's just obviously what's happening. They're committing war crimes. These are atrocities, of course. Is being compounded by the lack of, you know, humanitarian aid that's being allowed to be sent into Gaza. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I would hope that um, people in Israel feel safer, feel like they're being made safer by this. At least that could be something that was justifying this stuff. But I mean, if you think about this in even a kind of logical way, you can't think the outcome of this is going to be that the people of Gaza are gonna become less radicalized. That they're That's gonna a great become point. That is a great point. And look, docile. I mean, it, listen. I want to be very clear that this is not, Palestinians are in no way distinct from other human beings. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in my context. I'm gonna put it in my context so people understand what I'm saying. If any government, if any government entity, if any military killed every member of my family, what do I have to live for at that point? I don't care if I live or die, but I know I'm angry and I know I want revenge. And so what the IDF is currently doing in Gaza is basically manufacturing more extremism. I mean, they're getting their retaliation, you know, they want their pound of flesh 
They're getting that pound of flesh, but if they think that this is somehow going to root out extremism, they would be mistaken, especially when you consider the leadership of Hamas is not in the Gaza Strip. The leadership of Hamas is in Qatar. So rather than, hey, making a deal with Qatar to get those disgusting Hamas terrorists out of there and bring them to justice, they're just carrying out retaliation against ordinary people. And I gotta say one other thing, okay? There have been some people who have responded to my reporting on this story to say that Palestinian civilians and Hamas militants are one in the one of the same. They're the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. The people who believe that are barbaric and they carry out barbaric actions. And I have absolutely no interest in hearing anything they have to say. That kind of justification of the brutality and the murders that are currently taking place. I mean, really, you want to talk? Let's talk about little children. Little children who should be in school, little children who don't even understand what this war is about. Those little children are the same as Hamas terrorist militants. No, I mean like the effort, the very aggressive effort to dehumanize these people is so disgusting and so difficult in regard to like avoiding being black pilled by all of this, really. Like you see a side of humanity that is so cruel and so vicious. I try to put it out of my mind and pretend like it doesn't exist, it exists. And it's the same feeling I got was when I saw some of the justifications toward what Hamas did to innocent Israeli civilians. What the hell is wrong with people? I don't understand. I just do, I don't understand any of it, I don't. And it gets worse, every day it gets worse. Look, an hour or so before we came on air, CNN was reporting that in the north of the Gaza Strip, the IDF had actually intensified their airstrikes, intensified them. Now keep in mind, a lot of Palestinians can't just evacuate and flee. Where are they gonna go? And you want them to go to the south? They're bombing the south too. There is no part of the Gaza Strip where civilians are safe. And then they turn around, they point to, oh, look, look, polls show that 80% of Palestinian civilians favor Hamas, while acknowledging that Hamas is a terrorist group. So let me understand something. If you are living under terrorist rule, and you know that these individuals have no problem murdering you, if you say or do anything they disagree with, are you really gonna respond to that poll by saying that, no, I do not favor Hamas? By the way, the, I'm wondering what happened to the 20% of people who had the courage to say that they were against Hamas in that poll. No, it's just any excuse to dehumanize, any excuse to justify what very clearly, what very obviously is happening in the Gaza Strip, it is ethnic cleansing. There is documentation proving it, okay? The IDF, the Israeli government, I should say, confirmed documents showing that one of their plans, one of their strategies was to essentially push the remaining Palestinian civilians, likely millions of people. I mean, who knows when the air raids are gonna be done? Who knows how many people will be left? But after that's over, they were planning on pushing them into Egypt. Get them out of the land, get them out. Just completely displacing millions of people. And we're supposed to sit back and say, that's totally fine. We co-sign. In fact, here's our hard earned taxpayer money to fund it. Here are our weapons to, to carry out this brutality. I just don't understand how anyone can justify what is happening right now. You have to have a certain level of just reckless disregard for human life to look at what's happening in the Gaza Strip right now, look at the number of literal children dying and say, no, this is totally fine. This is totally fine. I mean, it's definitely not gonna lead to peace. It's definitely gonna lead to more extremism. In the long run, it's not gonna keep Israeli civilians safe. But we really wanted retaliation, so um, we're gonna justify this and we're gonna watch all these babies get killed because it makes us feel good. Sorry, I know that was a bit of a rant, I blacked out a little bit. I just, I can't, I mean, day after day, day after day, the, the barbarism, the brutality, the deaths. Like I'm supposed to come here and be, be, be hushed tones, like let me speak as if I'm on NPR, as if this isn't the most unjust military action I've, I've 
witnessed in my lifetime. 9,000 people gone, gone. <sighs> Mohammed Al Aswad, who's a Palestinian, told CNN the following. This is after the second bombing of the refugee camp. Children were carrying other injured children and running. With gray dust filling the air, bodies were hanging on the rubble, many of them unrecognizable. Some were bleeding and others were burnt. And there's all sorts of uh, pro-Israel conspiracy theories floating around on Twitter. I'm sure some of you have noticed them, alleging that uh, Palestinians are faking their deaths. What is it, you don't want to accept what you're co-signing on to? You don't want to accept the fact that you're totally fine with these deaths, so you're gonna pretend like these deaths are faked? No, 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 they're real, they're definitely real. And you enjoy it, so just tell the world who you really are. Why are you trying to hide it? Why are you trying to conceal it? What I'm not okay with is that as an American, because of our government, and how they will greenlight anything Israel wants to do. These people are dying in our name, with our money, with our weapons. And I'm supposed to sit here and be okay with it. I mean, I think just for context for people at home to get an understanding, um, in the first week of the aerial bombardment, I think Israel uh, dropped about 6,000 tonnage of bombs on the Gaza Strip. Um, just for context, folks, not one single year of the American war in Afghanistan <laughs> did we do that, <laughs> right? So in one week, they dropped more bombs on Gaza than in any single year uh, the US military did on Afghanistan, which, you know, ostensibly, allegedly was in response to 9 11. You've heard the rhetoric that this is Israel's 9 11. Just for context of, the brutality here. And you know, another point I would like people to, for people to understand is this concept that Israel has to quote unquote defend itself. Essentially, this is a retaliatory act and so it's justified. And what I would say to that is that if you talk to any single member of Hamas, I would venture a guess, I wouldn't know. Um, but if you talk to any Palestinian about what Hamas did on October 7th, they would say that's in retaliation to the occupation. That's in retaliation to the suffering, the hunger, the brutality of the occupation. And they would say that it was justified because of that. And like it this wasn't, idea that, it wasn't, sorry. And it wasn't, and yeah. that's the point. So this idea that if you're retali when you're in retaliation of something, you don't have, you can be indiscriminate in the people who you harm and kill and maim, be they babies, elderly people, women, you name it. It just, that doesn't make any sense. And another thing again, that folks should take into consideration, because again, I think the, 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 the reason why we got this propaganda about Hamas beheading newborn babies on the internet and stuff like that. It's so that this behavior could be justified, right? Um, just, I, I, I just want people to understand that these people who are being Harmed right now, uh, they they don't have a voice, right? Uh, this idea that they they used to they they should have um they should have voted Hamas out. They, there was yes, there was a democratic election that in was 2006. held in two thousand six, and I, Hamas yeah. stopped letting them conduct elections. Like they're not like <laughs> this isn't some situation where they nominated these guys. They that there was a party platform that Hamas had, and they said, yo, we're gonna go out and indiscriminately. Kill a bunch of civilians, and um, you know, vote for us, and and we'll go out and implement that. That's that's not what happened here. And and another thing, is that it's not as if again, how does somebody, uh, an organization like Hamas, even gain prominence? Uh, they were propped up by the Israeli government years ago because back in those days, they wanted to under the Israelis mm -hmm. wanted to undermine a way less um, militant, way less jihadist organization. They propped these dudes up and now it came back to bite them. And most importantly, that, that like what I would want everybody to understand most importantly, Palestinian people have tried in the past different organizations to go about 
getting gaining their freedom by peaceful means protests, reaching out to um, other people in, um, in, in the world, other countries, human rights people, the all UN, of that stuff. The UN. The UN reached out to all of these people. These protesters, a lot of them got killed, a lot of them got jailed, they got crushed. So it's not like the behaviors of peace have ever been rewarded. They've never been incentivized. When they went about other means of trying to, you know, strike a blow against the occupation, against the, you know, the the oppression, they got utterly crushed. And so we're talking about some of the most desperate people on planet Earth. You know, some crazies arise out of that and they do something completely heinous. And the idea is like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. This will tell this will make people happy. I like I, I just don't I don't understand the logic here. I'm about to show you the kinds of regurgitated talking points that are doled out on corporate news day in and day out meant to justify the brutality that we're seeing in Gaza. 9,000 people dead. I want you to think about how many people that is with no end in sight. Tomorrow we'll come on the show and we'll tell you the number is now 10,000. And the next week after the weekend, we'll come back and who knows, maybe it'll be 15,000. How much? Does the Israeli government want? How many people need to die for Netanyahu to feel good about himself? I'm very curious about that. Because this is more than just a pound of flesh at this point. So Aaron Burnett has an IDF spokesperson, you may have seen him before. We've definitely showed some of his videos on the show. Asks him about the high civilian death toll. And you're about to hear the same Boring, nonsense talking points regurgitated to you once again. Let's go. You should have evacuated you and your family. You shouldn't have been there. That doesn't mean that we wanted to kill anybody. It just means that when we warned Palestinians two weeks ago to evacuate that specific area, because there was going to be major combat operations, they should have heeded the warning and they should have left. They should have left where exactly? They should have left to the south, where you guys are also doing bombardments and, and airstrikes. Is that where you want them to go? The IDF confirmed to the media that they're doing airstrikes in the south. So this ridiculous notion, by the way, even like logistically speaking, displacing a million people from half of the strip is just, it's untenable, they can't do it. And the IDF knows that it's untenable, they know. You think they're stupid? They know. Thanks for watching the video guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member and members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.